Sandy. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Sandy and Ken Hour, where we do personal growth, really cool ideas to help you out from social media to your connection points to things that make your life better. This is Sandy Grigsby. She's considered one of the top personal branding experts in the world, and it's a big planet, so to have that title, it's huge. A year ago from this week, we were in South Africa in front of about 8,000 people, and this lady danced out on stage, and her fan base just exploded down there. So her podcast is like number one in South Africa. I don't know why, but that's why. How cool is that? Is actually? And a year ago, I had a broken toe, and this year, I have a sprained finger. Yeah, she just has to break <laughs> something. Uh, I'm Ken Rakowski. You guys, of course, know me. A little background about me. I know only really Bill knows this. Uh, during the 90s, I um, was on radio. I was on radio on both the internet. That may not sound like a big deal now, but back then it was a huge deal. You were one of the internet. ones. You were one of the first ones. I was the first one. First one to actually stream <clears throat> my radio show did pretty well, but my online show it had almost a quarter of a million listeners every day. This is before the podcast, everyone. That was a big right. deal. And then uh, my last radio show got to number nine in the country to about three and a half million listeners every single day, Business Rockstars, which we'll be launching again. Matter of fact, that Christopher Miller guy that's not sitting in his chair is going to be part of our team to do that. He owns a ton of radio stations around the world. Today, we're going to try something different. We are. We always try something different. Yeah, today. Well, no, we've been working on your awesome confidence class that you put on. It's called Confidence Jam. You go to Sandy and Focus. It, it's mesmerizing. It just keeps getting better. You should I, see the content I created today. It's like, where did this even come from? Well, here's the idea. When you go through like a Tony Robbins or a Brendan Burchard program, they always want you to talk about your, your why. You know, what are you going to change if you had it all? So what is your why, your existence? And you wrote a whole dissertation on confidence. Mm -hmm. I mean, literally a dissertation. It's, 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 and where it came from, hey, Trevor, look, hey, buddy. Well, that's a surprise. Great to see you here. Good to so see you. This whole, this whole idea of confidence it has really turned into more than just confidence, but personal branding and how confidence is connected between that. Mm -hmm. Today, I want to do something a little different. Okay. I have a word that I've been kind of floating around with. I want to test it with you guys. And then I want to dive into some principles around it. And I think it's one of the most important currencies out there. It's not like Bitcoin or any cryptocurrency. It's a different type of currency. And I'm, hopefully I wrote it right. I'm going to ask you to read it. And let's, I want to hear it come from your mouth and see if it doesn't oh boy, sound stupid. It's probably okay? some complicated word. No, 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 not at all. What do you think? Friendfluence. Friendfluence. <laughs> it's kind of like influence. You know, I think, yes. <laughs> I think, you know, I, I think friendfluential. Friendfluential. <laughs> so I looked at, I go to my LinkedIn and I have 30,000 people, I do the free one, by the way, you always have to keep it under 30,000, which means you have to constantly fire people. So I sit there on LinkedIn and I have to decide constantly, who do I need to get rid of in my 30,000 friend list? So I have to step back and ask the question, who really is a friend? What is really a friend? And I've always questioned this. And what I did a long time ago is I created a friend responsibility list and i called people out these are my real friends and the reason why is because i learned that my name was being used all the time going yeah i'm ken's oh. friend you know hey your image is used all the time oh yeah catfish i'm i'm used as a catfish thing all the time we get a notification every week about someone who is catfished by his face yeah different I, name different background everything but they totally fall for it if i get a chance i'll try to play one of the most unique ones okay I'll, it, it, it's kind of mind-blowing one of them i'll show you in a moment but what I wanted to do is I wanted you guys to start scrutinizing your friends. Scrutinizing, like seriously sitting back going, all right, I'm in a Zoom world for right now. Who is really the ones that stand up and put out? The ones that are really there when you need them or the ones that really truly, and I hate this is gonna sound weird, make you cry. Mm -hmm. They make you cry because they're real friends. Does that make sense? And I know that you've gone through kind of a friend firing over the last two years. Yeah, I fired a bunch of friends. Fired friends, demoted friends. Mm -hmm. Because if we looked at our life as if it was linked in, just our life, and we only have so many friends we can have, and you have to demote, promote, or move to another category, maybe being associates, or being someone you associate with, or different levels, 
I wanted to talk about that. You want to believe on this? Direction? No, I love this. Okay. Well, this is my book. My book is all around the friend connection. Yours is all around confidence. So over confidence requires the right friends. Oh, hell yeah. Like, the exercises that I teach requires you to ask people you love and people who love you in return. Very important questions about yourself. And again, your real friends will make you cry. They will be blatantly honest with you. They're going to tell you the things that you're like, I don't want to hear that. I, I'm in denial of that. I'm with William Quigley the other day. We were out on a boat and I look at William's gut and his gut is sticking out. And I just go, hey, William, after us going boating, let's go in for an ultrasound to see if you have twins. Right. <laughs> now we joked around about it, but basically I was saying, William, you're a fat ass right now. Because William told me at one point in time, Ken, man, your neck is getting kind of thick. And I go, oh, that sucks. But thank God he told me. So it, kind of, it, let, it could lead to sleep apnea. If my, that's a different story. But real friends will tell you the shit you don't want to hear that you need to hear. Yeah. Because real friends will make you cry. Mm -hmm. And I think we don't have a lot of real friends in our life. No, because people are always trying to coddle each other, make everyone feel good, don't want to say anything in that's not politically correct. And then they avoid telling people things that they really need to hear. That's it. So, so today... We're going to talk about first, I want you to really scrutinize your friends. So when I look at friendships, I look at it because I do have a lot of people in my network. That's just, so I would, and Bill's the one who really called it in the 90s. I've known Bill since the 90s. I love Bill Wright. He is a real friend. Okay. But I've told you all kinds of shit. What was that? I've told you all kinds of stuff. Yeah, you, 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 you uh, <laughs> kick my ass all the time. But I want you to think of a pyramid. As you have mine. As you have mine. I know, friendship, true. friendship goes both ways, right? So let's, I want you to think of a pyramid when it comes to your, your, your associative circle. At the very, 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 very top are not your best friends. They're your great friends. Great. They're at the top. They're higher than best. And your great friends are the ones that will give you a kidney. Your great friends might be your brother, your sister, your father. At that very pinnacle are the ones that will give up life for you. No questions asked. Could be your kid. My son is a great friend of mine. He, even though he's still a kid, you know, he's still my son, but I know that you're a great friend. So you're not just a best friend, you are a great friend. I'm at the highest level. You're at the highest kidney, you got it, whatever. Hopefully we do not have the same blood type. Fingers crossed. Um, but the, idea, <laughs> but the idea is this, we have to scrutinize that greatness of what that friendship is. Now, best friend falls right underneath that. That best friend is someone that will graduate to great friend. And very rarely a great friend will be demoted to a best friend. But it happens. Like, it does happen. Like Bebop, who I was telling Marco about, uh, Bebop is he, he hovers between great and best, great and best, great and best. Because sometimes he just disappears for a year. It's like, oh my God, my great friend disappeared. You're a best friend now. Demoted. <laughs> and then all of a sudden Bebop goes, I don't want to be demoted. And all of a sudden Bebop shows up and he carries on the responsibility of a great friend. Because there are responsibilities. Everyone says, oh, wait a second. That sucks. You mean I just can't be me? No. No. You can't. Because with social media today, Everyone thinks they're friends. So we have to really crystallize this idea of these relationships. Because guys, you don't have time to have two, three, four, five hundred friends. You don't. You don't have the bandwidth. You know, Bill, Bill Ryan, and I'm, Bill, I'm really bummed because I don't think we're going to be able to go to Bali for your birthday because maybe we can't get into Bali. But every decade, Bill has been awesome to allow me and a few other close friends, which is another level, to hang out on his decade birthday. So we did Rome, we did China, we do all these great locations. But you have your good friends in that group. You want your great and best friends to be in that group, but sometimes they're not always available, so we then go down to another level. So we have great, best, good friends, acquaintances. And by the way, we talk to our friends differently especially us guys let me give you an acquaintance conversation hey dude what's going on because you don't know that person's name at times <laughs> so you use the word dude yo hey and you go oh damn it man who is this where's jim quick when i need him <laughs> <Where's Jim Quick? laughs> 
Where is my memory magic? You, that you I even might know their name, but you don't really know much about them, period. Like, yeah. how is your daughter? Uh, son, son, yeah. Yeah, yeah that yeah, happens yeah. a lot, right? <laughs> and, that, that's, and this is really important because what has happened is this. There are so many bots inside LinkedIn and Facebook. It tells them happy birthday for you, happy anniversary. So all of a sudden I get this message on my birthday. I counted to my last birthday because I was able to cluster them all together. I had 2,100, oh, 2,163 happy birthdays in my LinkedIn. Jeez. None of these people really knew me because my real friends would call. My real friends are the ones that will make the point not to do that. Okay? So that's what I want to talk about here. Yes, I love it. You game with it? It's good. And then before we go, I have to show you one of the craziest catfish messages I ever got. You it's want to wait. Crazy. It is so crazy that two of the biggest movies next year are because of the, or, 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 are from this person who, cat, who got catfished catfish. by me. Yeah. So you got to hear this, okay? <laughs> All right. So it means oh, you don't go away. Cool. You got away. Hey, real quick, uh, John. Let's pop John on real quick because John's hanging out with us. John, uh, we had a blast with him two weeks ago on the show. He had the company called Big Ass Fans. Oh, yes. And uh, he looks great. He doesn't have a big ass. But in the picture that I had showed him that he was a big ass guy there. But you're, that was your partner. Your partner likes to post fat pictures of you apparently, right? That's right. That's right. Hey, tell us the new book. It, it launched on uh, August 4th, I believe. Yeah. So, you know, I wrote a book called The Elephant's Dilemma. And for those of you who really feel like you've been stuck, this book is a battle cry to get us to take leaps and break free. You know, for me, I worked uh, for a lot of years and just felt like I couldn't make a big enough impact. And so many of us are like that. So it really uses the idea of a, of a metaphor being the elephant and talking about so many of us have so much strength that we just don't unleash and we, we can do it. We can do it uh, to change the world or change our neighborhood or, or just make ourselves feel like we're making a positive impact. And just give us a couple of principles from the book. Yeah. So, you know, one of the things, look, I was raised in a very diverse environment. And when you think about innovation, you have to think about ultimately the community around you. So I really explore the concept of diversity of thought and how that ultimately allows us to break free in different ways, thinking outside of our bubble. Also kindness, <laughs> you know, look guys, I'm a, I'm a business person, but the idea of being kind is something that really helps drive innovation. So that's explored. So really I, what I consider to be principles that get you to look beyond the four walls around you are those that are explored. And, and ultimately, as I said, it's a battle cry for us to look outside and embrace diversity, embrace uh, a willingness to, to look at the world as a community. It's awesome. Elephant Dilemma, we get over at Amazon. Hang out with us, John. Pop in, guys. All of you guys pop in. By the way, Jay, I do my Peloton during all my meetings in the morning. It's 600 burned calories and I love doing it. So Jay, I admire what you're doing there. Uh, most of my mental meetings are like this. So uh, it's, <laughs> it's a good use of my energy and time. So thank you. You know, it'd be cool if you could put a cool green screen behind you and do that and make it I'm, look like you're getting chased. I'm, I'm working on it. I'm working on it. I get by a tiger I, or tribes, like tribes. Every once in a while, it's a different type of tribe from a different continent. Yeah, like, or, or like, what's that one movie where all the monkeys were coming through? Indiana Jones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that would be actually forest, be, that'd be a cool thing. And just keep doing this every now and then. All right, so <laughs> I want to go through this, uh, this idea back to friends, and that's the ROI of friends. And I hate to be very binary on this because everyone says it's emotions. It's things that, you know, make you feel good. No, there's a real ROI of friends because many of us have those friends, and I know you do, that burn you out. Yes, they do. So, so much so that they schedule time with you. They don't pay attention to time because they're your friend because they're you're going to be lenient yeah. and they suck the life out of you so often. Yeah. I eliminate those friends and we have them. They've been friends for a long time. Maybe we've been through very strong things, but the moment my friends start disrespecting my time and who I am as a person, move on next. And it's painful. It is painful for you and for them. I demote them down to what's above acquaintance. Uh, just friend. That's friend. Yeah. Just friend. But do they know that? Oh, I make it very clear. 
Yeah, and this is the other thing. If you really care about them, you let them know. Yeah. You let them know. It's kind of like me telling William that you look like you have twins. We need an ultrasound. You need to let them know because you're a real friend. You will tell them that. Now, it's going to hurt their feelings. It might suck. You may never even talk to them again. But they at least know now where you place them. The thing is, if you don't, you're actually doing them a disservice. You're not giving them the opportunity to grow as a human being. Because if they think what they did was fine and you're not affected by it, then they'll keep doing that to other people. And it's not okay. So you have to let them know, this isn't okay. I didn't appreciate this. And give them the opportunity to either do nothing about it and stay where they're at or grow and regain your friendship. So Bill, I'll give you an example. Um, I had a very good friend. His name was Andy. And you know what Andy I'm talking, last name with an A. I don't talk to Andy anymore because he burned me out. He used my relationships. He did not follow through. And he hurt my name so much, but I warned him over and over again. Andy, let's fix this. Let's make this better. But because of the way he was, I had to distance myself because he hurt me as a person and the person, people that I introduced him to. Does that make sense? So I like the guy. I really do. But where he's at in his life was not a healthy place. I tried to pick him up. I could only do so much. Mm -hmm. So distancing was better for my community. It may have not been good for him, but for the community and for myself, it was necessary. So let's talk about this whole idea of friends. I want you to understand, guys, and I know you're thinking, come on, we all get friendship. I don't think so. I think the social media culture has changed the way we have seen friends. Fortunately, many of us are older. You know, Alan, you were there a, a few years before Friendster. So you, 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 you've, you've experienced friends. You know, we've all done it. So let me go through a couple of these things. So as I'm writing my book, by the way, John, I've been really pondering this idea of the ROI of friends. What is the real return of value of friendship? And then how do you make sure that that ROI is always growing? Kind of like cryptocurrency. Meaning if I buy on the low with my friendship, where everyone, we're all starting, and if we all grow together, all of our values go up. And how do we make all of our values go up? So here, let's just go a couple. By the way, there's a great study that's out showing friendship. I love this, by the way. And they show this in elderly. They, they die a lot later in life when they have good friends. They eat healthier. They have less colds, less fevers, and they just have a better life. Now, remember the blue zones? Yeah, the blue zones. They have a lot of friends. Blue zones, if you want to live past 100 years old, what they have found in all these blue zones, which there's about five or six of them, Okinawa, Ikaria, uh, Santorini, uh, Yoba Linda, what they found is you got those four things. You eat more plants than animals. You exercise every day. You wake up with a purpose, and then you have a social circle of friends. Those are those four things. If you want to live past 100, you need those things. That's what they found, the similarities. So when we find friends, friends keep us healthy. They keep us awake and alive. But I want us to think about those responsibilities of friends. So uh, they push us to accept ourselves better. You do this all the time, yeah. right? Bill does that too. Hey, he always calls me, he, he's one of, few people call me Kenny, by the way, Bill does. Hey, Kenny, let me just tell you, what I heard it sounded really good. I go, Bill, it sounded like shit. I didn't like it. He goes, no, no, Kenny. I want you to, and all of a sudden what he does, he has me accept what I do as opposed to seeing myself in a negative way because I shouldn't have been seen in a negative way. That's what friends do. Next, um, they call us out when we do things wrong. Oh my God, guys. I am shocked at how many of us just kind of sit back and we become voyeuristic on other people's lives that mean something to us. We should never be voyeurs. We should be active in their lives because we care, because we want them active in our lives. I don't, want, I don't want to have a big snot whistling in my nose that I don't see. It's I want a bat in the cave. A bat in the cave. I don't want a bat in the cave. I want someone to tell me, you got a whistler going on and we all hear it. I want someone to tell me that. Or food, you know, if you got like, like monkey jizz right here, you want it to be taken off. I don't know. Where did you come up with that? I saw a comic earlier. Um, friends, they're present. This is interesting. When I say present, Guys, I know we're doing Zoom all the time, but I make sure I call my best friends and great friends all the time. And I don't just call, I FaceTime, because I want to have eye contact. I want to make sure we're both paying attention to one another. I FaceTime, and it's funny too, the other day, uh, Tom Beers calls me and goes, why the hell do you always FaceTime me? Yeah, I uh, do. I'll give you three reasons. One, 
it rings forever and doesn't go to voicemail. Two, if you hang it up, I know that you hung it up. And three, when you answer, it's us. And he laughed at that, but it's true. You want it not to go to voicemail, you want it to ring forever, but when they pick up, they're present. Because mm -hmm. you can tell if they're not. They're looking yeah, around, yeah, 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 yeah. focused on the road, whatever they're doing, so you can tell. So when I FaceTime someone, that means I, it's important to me. It's presence. Let's share this moment to one another. I know it can be a pain in the ass. The guys now that know me, while they're driving, oh, uh, damn, Rakowski's calling me. Better FaceTime and pick it up. Because we're present as they're dodging traffic. So do you agree with me so far? They totally. call you out, uh, they're present. They really listen. Mm -hmm. That's true, really listen. Now explain that. Well. Because you're really good at this. At listening? Absolutely. Sometimes. It, it means that they listen beyond the words that are coming yes. out of your mouth. So they know who you are, who, what your personality is like. If you say one thing, but really mean another, so when they're listening, they're actively tuned into you and to see, and they're able to see if you're telling the truth, That's it. if you're stressed, if you're upset, if you're excited, and then they can inform you of what's really going on. So they'll say, oh, I noticed you did this because you do that. And you're like, oh, this gives you greater awareness. Give you an idea. Jim Quick, who you guys might know, the memory expert, who's, you know, Jim's at the top of his game. I'm not exaggerating. He calls me up, he called me up yesterday. Just for, just for me to listen to him and call him out on his shit. I go, Jim, I call bullshit. What are you talking about? And I dig deep and he goes, yeah, yeah, I guess you're right, whatever. And he loves that because no one else does that. He needs <laughs> that kind of friendship with you so you can call him out because everyone else kind of. Now, remember I said you got to fire friends? Well, be careful. Be careful of firing them during their adversity, their tough times. Because I believe when we're going through tough times, as friends, it only builds the friendship even more when you help each other get past that point. You know, some of my greatest, greatest, greatest friends, we went through hard knocks together. You and I went through hard knocks together a couple of months ago, or years ago. Mm -hmm. Really hard time. And uh, it allowed us to become closer. Yes. Right? So how do you, when do you define when to fire someone? When they start to vote when they start to take all your resources, when they're drowning and they think you're the only thing that's gonna keep them afloat and they push you down, mm -hmm. it's, that, it's that drowning friend is the one that really becomes dangerous. The one that is on drugs and refuses to get off of drugs. The one that does take money from you, literally steals money from you. And I've had it happen. I've had it happen often because I take in every straight puppy possible. And unfortunately, you start to realize what that friend or that individual is because they're only drowning and pushing you down. That's true. Okay. Yep. I'm you sorry. gotta let them drown. I'm sorry, not talking as much as normal. I know this is. This no, it's good. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, they keep your stress in check. This is an important one right now. Because I even came up to you the other day. I go, I am super stressed out. But but you know when I'm stressed out. A bunch of these guys that watch this know that too. Ken, I know you're stressed out. I could hear it and they call me out or they send something to the house or they pop over, Big Mike pops over, Big Mike pops over for just no reason. Hey, I'm here and all oh, damn it, Big Mike's here. But thank God Big Mike was here. You know, just needed that. Vice versa, I call it Big Mike counseling. What's going on? And I call him out on shit, he does the same thing. But it, we keep our stress in check. That's really important. I know we're going through all these. They keep us humble, important guys. How many douchebag friends do you have? Yeah, the ones that are confident, awesome, but the ones that are cocky, the ones that are arrogant, you got to collapse that or help them collapse it, not demote. Well, here's the reason. When you hang out with people who are a certain way, you sort of take on their traits after a while. And you'll say, oh no, I don't. But the more you hang out with someone who, if someone brags or does something that's just not right, after time, little things of what they're doing just start to rub off on you. On, so, so, why do you think the TV show Friends was great? Because they were all messed up. <laughs> so messed up. So they lived in the same place forever, guys, right? They, they slept all, with each other. They all were messed up, and that's why you really watch them because they hung out with each other. They all basically never allowed each other to get out of their own way. Mm -hmm. That's what happens when you hang out with really bad friends. But the ones that, have, what's the difference between confidence and cocky? Com being confident is knowing you're good at something being arrogant or cocky is thinking you're good at something yeah 
And generally, those people have the word guru or ninja <laughs> next to their name. Who is a ninja? Yeah, in what? In what? HTML. Okay, ninja in HTML. <laughs> Got it. Um, all right. Uh, they have your back. They, they have your back <laughs> even when it gets tricky. I love being in the triage business. When one of you guys calls me, I'm like, Ken, man, I got a problem. I got a problem. And I hear it, I go, damn, all right. And I know I at least can fix it or I have the tools around me to fix it. I love being in triage. So when it's tricky, my friendship it pops out. It's like, all right, now it's, it's stress time. Hand me the ball. Let me help you out. It's so true. It is. That's my time to shine. Problem is, I'm a bad friend. Because I don't ask for people uh, help from people when I'm in those tricky situations, so I'm I'm bad there. And we're going to talk about the bad traits that you might have that can enhance your friendship with others by asking. I'm almost done, guys. Um, they make friendship priorities. Sandy, with her friend, she created time slots. Mm -hmm. Like she does these things called gates. You want to see what a gate is? It's my gay friend dates. Yeah. So a bunch <laughs> of the metal guys have gates with sandy it's like oh you have a gate today right so what it, so all the gay guys love to call sandy and they hang out for like an hour and <laughs> we have so much fun it's like so amazing <laughs> <laughs> so the gates are all set up but they really respect that time yeah I mean, it's an important time it's all scheduled. And I do it with my female friends as well i i allocate time for my friends and nothing will change that time except nothing. there's two conditions that can change the time and and they're totally forgiven one is you have something that's going to pay you a lot of money, mm -hmm. so a job, then we reschedule. And the second one is you're very sick. But if there's some, nothing else, like I have a doctor appointment, well, then you should have scheduled it around our call. Or I have to go and run some errands, well, you should have done them around the call. So whatever it is, nothing changes that time unless it's making money and being sick, like very sick. So when you look at Sandy's calendar, you'll see all these call times. They're slotted and in there. They're in there because you make them important. Yeah, and I dedicate certain days of the week to certain people. So. One friend knows that every Sunday at 7 p.m. is our call time. And the only thing that will change that is being sick or work. Okay, here's another thing a friend is supposed to do. Might be tough for a few of you. They practice forgiveness. Yes. Very important. Especially when you have someone, you say something to them, and they get upset and offended and uptight, and they hold resentment towards you, as opposed to being compassionate, going, oh, I understand that. Okay, yeah, not a big deal. Let's move forward. And they want you to be a better person. Okay, so there's just some criteria. I, I listed this on Facebook 10 and years ago. Good friends will inspire you. Oh uh, yeah, I thought that was one of them. Maybe I just kind of skipped through it. I'll put the list together. Uh, I posted this 10 years ago on Facebook. And I think I got something like 25,000 likes on it or something like that, because I really scrutinize each one of these. But then I said, and now let me tell you who my best friends are and my Good friends are. Remember, we have great, best, good uh, friends and acquaintances. So I called them out because there's only like 100. It was only 100 people. And the why is it funny? It's just that's a lot. Oh, I don't know. I'm like, no, that's, I can't even fill up two hands. Oh, I, <laughs> well, no, no, on, on great, I can't. Well, on, on great, on best, and be, best, I probably have 12. I have five on great. Yeah, I'm still more than. Okay, okay, hang on, I'm different. <laughs> we don't all need to. Have I'm that. special, I need a helmet. <laughs> so, the reason why I do this is I want people to know who they are because too many people are using my name to get things that they didn't deserve. And then they come back to me later on going, oh, yeah, you're a really great friend. Your best friend said I should do business with them, and they screwed me. So, I put that on a list. I put all these people, here's Nolan Bushnell, here's, I mean, I list him, my brother, I made sure my brother is in there because he's not just my brother, but he's also a great friend. So I put this together and then what I did is I sent it out. <laughs> I literally said, I have an announcement. These are the people, if they say that they are a great or best friend, they got that title. I got so much shit from people that weren't on that. <laughs> That's true. What are you talking about? I, I, I saw you last year. I stayed at your house. Last year. Yeah, you, you're a friend. Awesome. Matter of fact, you stayed three days at the house. That's great. And you and I still cleaned your sheets. <laughs> friend with benefits. <laughs> yeah, friend with benefits. <laughs> but I, I wanted to put that together. And the reason why is because I realized that that ecosystem of who my 
best and great friends were, I made 90% of my revenue from. I generated huge amounts of opportunity from that top group. They're the ones that I didn't have contracts with. They're the ones that we looked at each other going, yeah, I know that's a deal too. Let's start working on that. We didn't even talk about what's the, what's the terms here? 80, 20, it's 50, 50, it's done. Let's move forward. It was a do it fast together type of attitude. So I start to realize that when they started to graduate to that top of that pyramid, they were the doers in my life. And they're the ones that, hey, I'm going on a trip. Bam, who wants to go? And 60 of them will show up because they realized that that group that I had became their group too. And they started doing business inside that. So when I look at friendship and I say ROI, there is a real return of any form of interest inside there or ROV, return of value. So when we look at our friends, sure, you got that friend out there you went to high school with. I don't talk to any of my high school friends anymore. I don't, I, go, I, go, I went back to my 30 year high school reunion and I'm going, I have nothing in common with these people. Nothing. Holy shit. I mean, I don't drink. Um, I, 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 don't, I don't watch sports on Sundays. I don't, and also I looked at all these people. They had four divorces, five kids to go along with that from different marriages. They're all drinking beer out there. They're smoking cigarettes. They're all out of shape. I have nothing in common with these people because all my friends are in shape. They don't, matter of fact, most of our close friends, they don't drink. Yeah, when someone comes over and they bring us a bottle of wine. What do we do with this? We're like, what kind of friend is this? <laughs> Our great friends know we don't drink. We don't drink, <laughs> right? Yeah. It's kind of funny. It's like, you know, I don't know. But I want you to scrutinize your friends. And here's a couple of ways of doing that. The first one is this. How often do you connect with them? Good point. How often? You know, when they, when they call you up, you go, oh, I got to take this. It's so important. It's really important. Do I take that call? And I even say that right away. I go, hey, I got a great friend calling me. I got to go. I got to go. This is important. So I have a mastermind group. And the nine of us in that mastermind group, we have a deal. And that is if we call twice, no matter what happens, you better hang up because it's an emergency. And that mastermind group is we talk about everything. We talk about what's going on in our bank accounts, what's going on in our, in our pants. We talk about everything and it doesn't leave that group. My business comes from that group. We don't have contracts with that group. We get shit done. So in this COVID Zoom time, I want you to question your friends. One, do you have communication? I call it connection with them on a regular basis. Because things are changing, guys. People are getting depressed and sitting at home, mm -hmm, right? So true. I mean, thank God you and I are here. Could you imagine if you were alone? Oh. Right? Oh, I, was I would sleep a lot. You would sleep a lot. My you confidence would, would not be finished. You would have watched everything, everything on Netflix. Everything on Netflix, Netflix yeah. would have been binged. I, I, somebody would actually say, yes, yeah, Sandy actually found the end of the internet. <laughs> she found everything. <laughs> so true. So communication and connection. That's your important thing, too. That means you got to... You, you should make a list every day, every day. Who are you going to contact? Because friendship should be work. And I, don't, I know you don't want to hear that. It really should. It should be work. What I love about uh, Bill's husband, he sends me a raunchy birthday card every year. Every year, a raunchy. I'm serious. I love that card that does that, right? But Bill, and I think, Bill, we don't communicate as much because we see each other on Zoom and all that. But remember, that's one direction. That's generally me talking to you guys. It's nice to get calls from you too, Bill, just saying. Um, it's always important to hear from you guys, but also not just through the normal mode. Let me tell you, I don't have a Ralph Simon. What is? I don't. Uh, one's probably upstairs. I'm surprised I don't have any down here. So there's this guy named Ralph Simon. Who's my, you got one right here? No. no. Right here. Oh, here she goes. So every week, no matter where he is in the world, he sends me a handwritten letter. Nope, sorry. No matter where he's in the world, from India, he's in, in Bangladesh, I get it with newspaper clippings from where he's at. Damn, does that take a lot of work. <laughs> and it's expensive. But every week, Ralph Simon would send me, now, just to let you know, Ralph created the ringtone. He's the father of the ringtone. Uh, he helped create Justin Timberlake. I mean, this guy's a big deal. 
but every week, no matter what. Now you want to talk about rising above and communicating. That takes a lot of effort and work. That's at the highest level, right? I mean, he literally is making sure he sends me something every week, religiously. That's where I'm saying friendship takes work, right? Totally does. So communication, you got to put work into it. And then the most important out of this, guys, <laughs> you have to be talking true to them. What's really going on? Because I know you, I hear you talk to some of your girlfriends, and it's very surface. Those are the friends. Those are the friends. That's exactly yeah. it. The Cause, surface. Because you hear me talk to the ones that are great friends, because I'm really fun. Yeah, I just heard you on earlier, and you challenged, and I don't want to get into politics, but you challenged them on a political position, and you spent time, you didn't get angry, they did either, and it was a really good outcome. Yeah. So it takes work, and that's probably that, that, that third rail, you know? You talk about things that are very uncomfortable. Sandy had a friend that um, was going through a process, oh, let me rephrase, I had a friend that was going through a process that wanted to adopt, and they wanted my name to help. Uh, seal that deal for the adoption. And I, I, I didn't feel they were right. They shouldn't have adopted. So I said no to that. I said, no, where you're at. And by the way, they came back later on thanking me for that because they were using that as something to repair the relationship. So real friends, guys, are the ones that are going to make you cry. They're going to make you cry. Now, I know I've been talking a lot. Anyone want to contribute to what I'm saying? Anyone want to jump in and say anything on this? Let's see. Look at Jay. Jay's bringing up his phone. He's done doing his 400 calories. Okay. Okay. I've, I've, I have a question. Oh, sorry. Go Wait, ahead. Let me do Jay first before. Yeah. Uh, hang on. Go, go ahead, Jay. Yeah. 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 No, I, I like the idea of, of friends in that way because I, I reach out and I try and help a lot of people. It's kind of my nature to do that. And at times I feel like are people taking advantage of that? They come back to me, they ask for things and so on and so forth. I'm sure both of you, you you're clearly a giver people. So you must have this happen a lot. And it's like, well, you know, what's this really all about? And so I, I, I do want to, I, I do want to give to people, but I, I'm a little sensitive because I get a lot of people at times approaching me. So I appreciate just the cognition of that. I think the other thing is there are some old friends who, you know, have gone through tough times and you're sitting there in the midst of when they're being very challenged and you're trying to sit there and go, do you go into the black hole with them? Or how do you support them through something like that? And so I, I've, I've learned, my wife was very helpful, keeping a little distance actually was beneficial to them and to me as opposed to going into black yes. hole. So I appreciate your acknowledgement and talking about that today. The last takeaway from what you've said, and it's funny because I have some close friends, but to really focus on those ones at the top and actually is, uh, you know, as you go through like new people come in, the idea that, the, that and, and I do find it, that to have some friends you can bounce off very important, but to really focus on that top group and really open up to them and really put the time and energy in, uh, that's one of my takeaways today because I think there's some close people. I could put a little more time and energy and I'd probably get that much more back. I've never, I've never thought about it in the hierarchical way that you've talked about. I kind of look at it as a, a wide palette. So thank you for all of that. One thing, Jay, I wanted to add to what you said in the beginning was when you are extending yourself or overextending yourself to help everybody, you're actually doing them a disservice. So you, you heard of like putting your oxygen mask on first. I actually explained this to my friend today. You have to put your oxygen mask on first because if you have a child in the seat next to you and you put theirs on and then you black out because you didn't put yours on first and they're kind of okay, but you didn't really buckle them in properly and you didn't buckle yourself in properly and now the plane or the car or whatever just crashed and you die, they die too. So it's kind of the same thing with your friends. So you have to put your oxygen mask on first so that you can help them and get them through the next process. And then when you're doing that, it's really important to say no. Mm. And the when you say no, you're helping them because you're giving them an opportunity to grow. So if you're always saying yes, 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 you're taking away that opportunity for them to use their minds and to get more creative and think to the next step. That doesn't mean you can't advise, but to always step in and help isn't doing anyone any service. Thank you. And the last thing, just to be a little more truthful, because I have some friends and I just listen and they whine and they whine and actually it becomes kind of negative energy. And I'm like, well, maybe my role is just to sit here and listen. But after a while, it does wear me down. And it's like, I like, can you stop whining about that? You know, it's like, it's, it's becoming so negative, you know, but again, I, a part of what I feel a friend is, is to listen, right? But there's probably a limit to that too, right? But in the same breath, it's also your service as a friend to let them know that they're whining. So I had the exact same situation. I had a friend that I loved. We worked together. We used to hang out together. 
And the more I hung out with her, I realized that she was so negative. Everything was a whine and a complaint. And even if I said something that was positive, it was like, oh, that's great. I never, and she would go on. And I realized that every time I was with her, I started feeling the weight of her physically and mentally on my body. And it was not feeling good. And it started to drag me down. Then when she would call, I would dread picking up the phone. So finally I had to say to her, I love you. You complain too much. You look at everything as negative. And I pointed it out to her, I let her know. And I said, I'm going to take a break and allow you to reset if you need me. Once you've reset, I'm here for you. How's it going? It went beautifully. About eight yeah. months later, she came back and said, thank you for what you did. It completely changed me. She left the job that she was miserable at. She got a new job and now she's super happy and her life is completely changed. But it took me telling her that and then separating myself from her for her to have that realization and realize she had to change herself. Mm. Yep. Thank you. Yep. Where are you located, Jay? Uh, Hollywood Hills. In Hollywood Hills. Got a hot day yeah. today, right? Nichols Canyon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's warm yeah. up here. Yep. But we get a little breeze. <laughs> we get a little breeze. That's all right. Thanks. Marco, let me go to you. So um, let's say you lend money to a good friend. <laughs> you didn't Usually, lend money. You gave it to him. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you lend money to a good friend. A year later, is this person moving to best friend? Is going to remain a good friend, or is going to go down to just friends? Or well, let me ask a question. Yeah. Did you in lend general, them money intending to get it all back? <laughs> okay. I, that, this is a problem. So what I said earlier is, if I look at my great friends and best friends, and that's where ninety percent of my business is. I question then if the person I'm lending money to, what I'm doing now. So if they're going through a tough time, they're going, oh my God, you know what, I'm going through this divorce and I'm getting my ass ripped, I need some help. You go, you know what, I'm gonna help you out. You're not even lending. If you get it back, great. Because I think our biggest problem is the minute we give money to somebody, we put this, oh, I gotta get it back. You think it's a boomerang. That's why I'm giving money. Hey, I'm giving you money. I'm giving it to you, don't worry about it. I love you. We'll figure it out, whatever it is. That's it. Yeah. Okay. Because now what you're doing is you're saying, you better, you know, it's going to encroach your friendship. It's going to hurt it. That's why lending money is not a good idea. Giving money is okay. Lending, be careful of that. Yep. And if you do, get a contract signed. No, it doesn't help. It doesn't help, but <laughs> if you do, at least you make it really clear. Like, I'm lending you this yeah. money. Here's the contract so that they have an attachment to it. Otherwise, yep. your relationship will fall apart. Real quick, let me, let me go to Ben. Hey, Ben, great to see you. Hey, great to be here. Yeah, lovely. Hey, ben, how many kids you got again, Ben? Say again? How many kids do you have again? Oh, yeah, I know. Oh, yeah. Four or five? Nope. No, no, seven and one on the way. Seven. <laughs> one, one of my friends, William, uh, who's going to be on this Saturday, he has 12 kids, and he was the smallest family on the block. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't want to compete. I don't want to compete. Now, your yeah. book is all around the yin, the yang of life. Yeah, yeah. Right? So when you look at friends that are at the top, you know, your best and greatest friends, and then they kind of give you some negative, how do you use that to find the positive? Well, that's a good question. When they're at the top and they're creating the negative, um, I'm not sure if they do, if, if they're in that top space. Oh, you're saying um, that because the negative, let me give you a great example. I know Bernardo is not here. Mm -hmm. Oh, he is. Um, Bernardo owns a whole bunch of properties. And yeah. he had a, a, a great friend stay in one of those properties, but never wanted to leave. Mm. How did that go, Bernardo? Are they good <laughs> friends now? <laughs> well, we had to sue him to get out. Yeah, but you're not friends anymore, are you? No. Yeah. Yeah. It's like if you lend a friend a car, you expect it back when you ask for it, right? Yeah. A vehicle, yes. Something that's tangible, like money's different. Yeah. My, my wife has always said uh, on the subject of lending money, um, you know, never lend money that you can't afford to lose. That's exactly Absolutely. Right. It. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and so we've always had that approach. We, we, I, I love being generous within, you know, the, you know, the parameters of wisdom, of course, not foolishness and, you know, you know flippancy or anything. You know, property and things like that, I think, makes it complicated. I've, I've got an example, you know, a, a close friend of mine, I've done a little bit of business with him 
over the last 12 months, just a bit, just doing business consulting. He fell critically, life-threateningly ill um, about two weeks ago. And I got a call from his, his wife saying, he's in hospital, he's been hemorrhaging, his, both his kidneys have failed, they've opened him up, his, his bladder burst, they found a grapefruit-sized tumor in his bladder. Um, you know, so you know, he died a couple of times on the operating table, you know, he's, he's back out now, he's surviving, but we don't know what's gonna go on with everything that's happening. And they wanted to talk to me about, you know, what do we do about his business and all his clients under the circumstances? Um, you know, in, in that situation, you know, my interest there was whatever I can do to help so that you can just focus on getting better and recovering. Which is important. That, that's, 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 what a, that's a true friend. Yeah. That's um, a true friend. What's your relationship now? It's great. This, this was all of two weeks ago. Oh, yeah. got it. Um, <laughs> this, this, was, this was very, very recent. So um, the great thing is he's recovering well. Um, but something like that could have been perceived, and it sounds bad to say. It's a life-threatening situation, but you could also turn around and say, I'm not sure if I can take on the burden of your business while you're recovering. I want to help, but run your business for you? How do I manage that with my own responsibilities? That's intense. That's intense. Yeah. Bernardo and I have a, a mutual friend. It's more of a Bernardo friend than I. He is dying all the time. Right, Bernardo? He is constantly dying. And he always wants to borrow something. Or it's like over a couple of years ago, it's like, I, I can't give you anymore. You should have. It sounds horrible. You should have died a long time ago, right? <laughs> and uh, Bernardo, he's pretty healthy now, isn't he? Can't hear you, buddy. Can't hear you. It's okay. You have to unmute yourself, Bernardo. We've been doing Zoom for like five, six months now. You should know the response, the role. Go ahead. Come on. Come on. Fat finger your phone. <laughs> oh, look at Michael's book. Who's your daddy? Yeah. Oh, that's right. Hey, Michael. I remember that book. Hey, how are you? Hey, what's going on, buddy? Um, I, I, does it look backwards? Um, no. Nope. Oh, it is? Okay, good. Uh, by the way, anybody who's a parent, I'm going to gift this book like probably once a week now to anybody who wants it. So um, I have a stack of them and I want to start sending them out. So just hit me up. I love that. If you're a parent of a kid who's under 12, ideally, uh, it's a fun book. It teaches you about, it's a funny book. It teaches you about how to tell bedtime stories, personal bedtime stories to your kid. How cool is that? That's so cool. That is awesome. It would be yeah. good. Look, I do that. John's going because John's going, John just launched his book last week, and John is hustling like crazy. <laughs> I'm actually shocked you're here, John. Oh, yeah. John, uh, number one in what seg uh, section on Amazon? Business ethics. There the, is. The, the course I failed. The course I failed in, uh, in, in undergrad. Uh, ben, how, how far did your book get to go? Uh, mine, mine went number one in um, three different categories, which was great. The, the first one, I can't remember the second, which is to my shame, but the first one was organizational and business psychology, um, wow. which was really good. I love hearing that. All right, yeah. something I promised earlier, guys. Here, uh, Marco, you wanted to say something else? Okay, lending money, got that one. Anyone else? Want to contribute, Trevor, anything? Hey, Ken, Ken, I just wanted to say one thing that you said. It was, it was kind of amazing. And I think, you, you know, I'd love to hear more about it. But you talked about the childhood friends. And what actually hit me when you said it was almost like there's a little bit of tragedy in there. Like this idea that, you know, your life back then is different now. I mean, I thought, I just wanted to say that that was... I, I almost felt your, your shift in that moment. The irony is, and his camera's not in, this guy named Joe Kruren, his camera's black right now. He's one of my mentors. And I've not talked to Joe for maybe 20 years, maybe 20 years, Joe. And he called me up the other day and he goes, I've been watching you on metal and I never expected that out of you. <laughs> Meaning I was a different person at one point in time compared to now. And I think we all go through this trans, those, those, those changes. And that could be because of family, job, career. If you were in the military, I mean, it could be just uh, life traumas. But we all make those course corrections and those shifts. And I, 
forget that I'm from a small town in the Midwest. They don't have those gigantic course corrections many of us have gone through. You know, those, we, they may have had little explosions where ours were like atomic blasts and they've changed our trajectory in so many ways. But here, I did promise you guys something. I want to, I had to look for it. So Sandy mentioned earlier, my persona. Yeah, is used for catfishing. So people are taking images of Ken that they're finding on the internet and they are creating fake profiles, representing themselves as if they were Ken, even though they're using different names. And they're targeting women and trying to solicit them in a romantic situation to take money from them. And these women are giving 20, 30, 40, $50,000 to these guys sitting in Nigeria or whatever. So this is one I got recently. Hopefully you guys could hear this and see, is the microphone, you know what it is? I'm gonna play this. Tell me if you could hear this. Wait, wait. Oh, come on, speaker. I feel like an idiot now. I feel like an old man. I can't get my freaking speaker to work. Oh, stop it. Oh, here it is. Okay, here. Here it goes. Here it goes. Hello, Ken. This is Sophia Stewart. Um, I'm the one that wrote The Matrix and Terminator. I would like to speak to you. It's very important. Um, if you text me. I'm not sure if you heard that at the very beginning. She goes, hi, Ken, this is Sophia Stewart. I'm the one that wrote The Matrix and Terminator. We had to Google that to see if it was even true. Yeah, yeah. Because we're like, no, it is, no it way. is, it is. She wrote both of them and sued the Wasowski brothers and James Cameron and won. She was catfished by me, right? No, by someone. By someone else that used my image. And I sat here and realized that it's so easy to pretend to be someone. Someone was pretending to be me and using all the good nature of what I was to take advantage of someone else. So it's so important, this goes back to this idea of really telling the world who your trusted people are. Because if we don't go out in the world saying, you are literally at the top of the game, and if you wanna work with someone that I really endorse, this is somebody I endorse. This person who's using my persona is, literally lying about themselves because could you imagine if she would have oh let me go check on ken's list oh i'm <laughs> it would have actually been all up there i just want you to really scrutinize your friends so ben your three top great friends best by the way it goes like this you got you on top you better be your own greatest friend in the world love yourself self-love then you have your great friends then mm -hmm. your best friends. So best friends are underneath great friends. Great friends that are gonna give you your kidney if you need it, okay? Yeah. Who are your three best, you can have as many as you want. Who are your three greatest friends? Um, my wife would be number one. Um, I love hearing that, by the way. That's so important. You. There's so many guys I know that they wouldn't even put their wife in their great friends or in their best friend category. Oh, yeah, no, yeah, definitely number one. Um, it's interesting that you talk about school friends. I've, I've got uh, two school friends that we have remained uh, super close. Um, and I, I, would put, um, I would put both of them as numbers two and three. Wow, that's great to hear. Is it yeah. High school or college? Uh, high school, high school. You're a Kiwi, right? Yeah, yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Wow. So we, we don't live in the same country. We haven't seen each other for a long time, but um, but I speak to them every Saturday night. Every oh, Saturday night. We catch up. That's cool. Yeah. That's awesome. yeah. Trevor, what do you got? Your top three. Great friends. This is above best friends. This is mm -hmm. you, you you literally are going to be in a foxhole with them, knowing that you guys are gonna survive and you're gonna celebrate the cool hell that you went through. You know, they're ones that are going to give you your kidney if you need it. Who are your three? Uh, one is my brother. Brother. Love him dearly. Uh, another friend in Germany who I've known for 30 years, and we don't speak very often, but every time we do, there's a direct connection and an ease of no details and going right for the heart. Um, and then Scott Leonard, of all people. Scott, Scott, get him back in metal. Okay. Get I just talked with him for about an hour. Yeah. yeah He's, it, uh, it, 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 was, it was the other person standing next to me who's not standing next to me who created that tension. Uh, understood. In other words, it's not me. Yeah. 
Scott's, so, Scott's challenging, and this is why I love him dearly and why I will call him a best friend or, or, or an all-time yeah, friend. Yeah, the top. Yeah. He has, uh, there are often times, and I'm sure you'll appreciate this, where I walk away calling him a motherfucker and then calling him back the next day and thanking him greatly for calling me out on things that maybe other people won't. He's That's why he's a great friend. Yeah, he's insightful. I, I miss Scott a lot, but he does yeah. have a big ego that needs to be in, kept in check every once in a while. <laughs> That's a safe way to put it, for sure. Yeah, and by the way, can I just make a suggestion? Same thing, going back to Ben. I mean, once a week might sound like enough, but little texts during the week. Um, my great friends, we have our own little WhatsApp group and we ping each other literally several times, sometimes a day with funny things we see. And it's a great way to link us all together and have dialogue. So um, that one call once a week might be good for you. It may not be great for them. It, they might even want more. Yeah. It's a tough time. New Zealand's different right now because they're basically out of everything. Their, their prime minister is awesome. Yeah. And remember that the importance of having friends like that is to keep your spirits up. Yeah. So have those little things, the little messages or things that you send them to make them laugh and vice versa and engage because that keeps the connection going. How about you, John? Who's your top three great friends? Not best, but great. Yeah. So uh, my wife um, and I'll tell you agree that the partner has to has to be there. Um, the other is uh, my co-founder, which is unique. Um, and it's not common to have someone that's close to you, but he and I were together a big ass fan. So this, this allows us to, to do it more in a, uh, um, I, I'd say a safer setting, you know, than, than creating a business, um, from scratch and going through that turmoil. And the other is, is just a, a friend who, you know, um, we, we played college baseball together, but, I uh, is an individual that, you know, has um you know some some anxiety and 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 depression issues and and but that brings us together in this amazing way and um so i would say th those are my three take advantage of communication platforms right really it's so fun when i get some my 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 brother is one of my great friends and when he sends me something maybe once or twice a week i just lose it it's like oh my god this is a shareable he gets it and of course, when I send it to other people, they go, I don't get it. Because we are connected at that level. And that's what great friends are for too, yeah. the sense of humor. Like I laugh at stuff she says that everyone goes, I don't, I don't get it. I know, I get it. <laughs> yeah, only, only a handful. I want to thank all you guys for hanging out. We do this every single Tuesday, one o'clock, always a different topic. You want to go check out Sandy's Confidence Jam, which is amazing over at Sandy and Focus. And uh, if you are new to metal, Guys, there's stuff going on every single day, multiple times a day, incredible stuff. I am excited about Saturday's medal because Dee Snyder is one of our speakers. And Dee, if you don't know who he is from Twisted Sister, just type in Dee Snyder and Al Gore. Oh, yeah. And you'll see what Dee did with Al Gore. It's awesome. So that's this Saturday. I want to thank all you guys for hanging out with us and we really appreciate it. And we'll all talk to you later. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye, all.